Okay, well, hello, Amy West from New Zealand and Wales. Say hello, Matthew. Hello. Uh, it's uh, 6.20 in the morning in New Zealand. Uh, I wish I could be with you. Remember. Unfortunately, other obligations meant I, I could only go from Amiga 37 back to New Zealand. I had, to, had some uh, business to take care of. And the only flights I could get me back to the, the States was on Sunday. So it would arrive on Sunday. So I guess I missed this year. But next year, I promise I will attend. I know I said that last year, but last year there were other extenuating circumstances. Hey, I'm really pleased to uh, present to you today. Uh, it's <laughs> the 25th anniversary, the silver, the, the, uh, the silver Jubilee of um, Ami West the longest running Amiga show in North America and perhaps the longest running Amiga show in the world. So, you know, all, many other Amiga shows have come and gone. COVID put many of them to, to rest the last few years, but all through that period, Ami West continued, you know, through the work of uh, Brian Deneen and Bill Bazzari and Jerry Gray and the team, you know, they've kept things going. Unfortunately, as Bill's already mentioned, Brian cannot attend this year due to health reasons. Look, Brian, we wish you a speedy recovery. Uh, your excellent services as MC at Emmy West will be missed, but I'm sure Bill will do, do his best to live up to your very high standards. So get well soon, uh, uh, Brian, and uh, hope to see you all that we'll see you next year. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. This is the first time we've done this, so there we are. This is going to be a and entire screen no. share can we all see that good good okay the tw amy west 2022 silver jubilee wow i never thought i'd say that my first amy west was 2010 where we announced the uh, development of the amiga one x1000 here we are 12 years later and we're still here it's even better uh, I'm pleased that once again, I'm sponsoring Amway West on behalf of Aeon Technology. Uh, we're the gold sponsor again this year. Uh, it's been a, you know, a, a wild and wacky ride over the last two, two years. And hopefully, um, at least from a COVID point of view, the world seems to be getting over that. Uh, other things are happening in the world, but we're not here to talk about those. We're here to celebrate the Amiga and everything that makes the Amiga what it is today. It really is a good time to be an Amigan. Forget all the nonsense and, and, uh, and despair you hear about. Oh, isn't it awful? Isn't everything terrible? Actually, having been to Amiga 37 in Germany, which was probably the biggest show of, the 20, of, of this century, uh, with up to over 1,400 people registered, it was a massive show. And the, every Amiga flavor was on display. Classic next generation, uh, Amiga OS 4, Morph OS, uh, Eros, emulation, FPGA, you name it, it was all there. And it, to me, it just shows the breadth and width of the Amiga community in all our glorious forms and flavors. So celebrate being an Amiga and, you know, give the trolls a kick. Not, li not literally, <laughs> and ignore them. Right, uh, at last Amy West, I mentioned that we just got uh, a OS4 booting on the A1222 motherboard. Uh, I fully expected everything to be out and delivered and you know, them to be in the field, uh, in the wild now. Unfortunately, due to the uh, vagaries of COVID, the worldwide shortage of components, uh, you know, and the unavailability of people to actually make these things, uh, there's been major delays. Uh, fortunately, we're working in collaboration with a -Cube Systems, and as I mentioned at Amiga 37, uh, they are now selecting the final manufacturer, um, and hopefully we'll have all the parts, and that's the biggest problem. Uh, prices have gone through the roof, uh, but we're pushing ahead, we're committed to building the boards, and, uh, and as Enrico Vidali of a -Cube said, at Ami West, uh, sorry, at Amiga 37. And I've got the proof because it's on video. 
uh, we hope to deliver the, the production boards in the first quarter of next year. Um, it's going to be an expensive process for us, but I'm committed to doing it, so we'll try and keep the price down as low as possible. Uh, I, you didn't hear me say that, Matthew, I'll keep quiet now. <laughs> But one thing that aon has been doing over the last few years is a massive and continuous ongoing software effort. And, and should I say expensive ongoing software effort. And uh, rather than me talk about it, because I don't control this, um, Matthew controls our very active uh, Amiga development team uh, of uh, developers and beta testers. Uh, it's, uh, it's not an inexpensive effort. And Matthew, I'm going to throw it open to you. Hello everyone, it's great to uh, talk to you virtually. I wish I was there. Um, hopefully next year I'll be with you in person along with Trevor and uh, we, can, we can celebrate some more successes uh, over the year. Um, I hope you enjoyed the recent release of the Enhancer Software 2.2 which we brought out back in August. Uh, it was a there was a very large update with um, a major version of Warp 3D Nova, which was very important for 3D games. And I'm, I'm sure you've seen some of the games that have come out since uh, the 2.2 has been released. It's opened the floodgates for more advanced gates, uh, games uh, to be released on, on OS4. Um, there has been eight updates of the Enhancer since uh, August 2016, since its inception. And uh, we, we we're pleased that we've only charged for two versions. We've charged for the version one initial license and the version two and a second license. And in between, all the updates have been completely free of charge to those users. So. Uh, they, they represent many months of work each each update and we, we were pleased that we could uh, provide that to the community without having to go back for any any additional money uh, we we are very pleased that we can now produce the version 2.3 which which is due to be uh, a free upgrade once again and it will have some crucial updates to Warp 3D Nova. The work still carries on with, in respect to the 3D uh, graphics subsystem. Uh, as, as well as up, upgrades, there will be brand new exciting components included. And we're, whenever we can, the future work that we're doing for the Enhancer 54, we're bringing down the technology and included it in the, the recent upgrades. After um, 2.3, uh, uh, sorry, uh, before 2.3, we, we are going to produce a new version of the Enhancer Software Core package. Now, this was initially released in October 2020, for, uh, free of charge to the entire community, irrespective of whether you bought the Enhancer or not, you can download, register and download the, the core package and install it on your computer with, without any charge. Um, it's the core version two now uh, is going to be released two years exactly after the initial release. And again, it's going to be free. There's not going to be any charge for it. It contains all our basic libraries, our gadgets, our classes. And if you're, a, if you're a user and you're, you're using a package um, such as uh, Dan Jed Leaker's uh, sound, sound editor, um, that uses the core gadgets. Well, where do you get them from if you haven't bought the enhancer? Download the, the free core package, install it on your computer, and, and you can make full use of it. And it's great if you're a developer, you can develop for the enhancer because there's a full SDK included in the core package. Um, and uh, we, 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 don't, we don't want to just update the package. We are going to include some more things into the core to, ma to make it a wider package uh, for, for users and developers, crucially. 
So uh, last year, you might have heard Trevor talk about the Enhancer 54 project. Now, this is a self-booting distribution. Uh, so some users were asking, I don't want to install the Enhancer over my OS4 uh, partition because I want to keep it as, as it came from Hyperion. And we understood that the Enhancer 54 allows you to install the Enhancer software on its own partition. And it takes a few key components from the OS4 distribution, um, which, which are installed, and then it will be a self-booting system. Now, it is a very large project. It's an ongoing pr uh, project, and, uh, and it's, it's taken a long time to get to this point. It's Aeon's most ambitious project to date. Um, there's going to be some very important key components in there uh, that we've never seen before on our platform. Uh, so in six to nine months, you should see this, this coming through. Um, one of the important things that we've done recently that I can, I can announce is um, we've got a license for AMI TCP and there's a PPC version that's been ported, uh, and it's now got DHCP support as well. So that will be included in the Enhancer Software 54. Nova Bridge is, um, is going to be a very important uh, 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 3D software, which allows you to run the old Warp 3D games and applications with your new Warp 3D Nova um, system. Uh, this is very important if you if you like your old games, but you you want you've got a modern system with with Nova and a modern graphics card. Um, Nova Bridge is the bridge to the old the old uh, games. We were we were initially going to include it with Enhancer Software 54. But uh, there was a demand for it. So for people who want to have early access, we're going to release it on AMI Store as a chargeable project. And users who wish to, to use it earlier can pay and get early access. Uh, the revenue from this we will then reuse and uh, recycle back into our graphics development projects. So. Um, like most of uh, most of the enhancer revenues, it it gets put back into developing more complex uh, software projects as we go along. Um, thanks, Matthew. Uh, one thing that's not really an AOM project, but it's one I'm 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 fully involved with and funding, and that's the Exec SG for OS4. I don't want to talk about this because we've got a, uh, a complete presentation by uh, Stephen Soli that follows uh, our presentation here. And Stephen is the lead, team lead for uh, the uh, Exec SG uh, team. And he will tell you all about our progress with uh, Exec SG. But uh, it, I think it's worth mentioning because it is a major component of OS4. And without it, uh, OS4 will be running on our higher PC hardware. Uh, this is a shameless plug for the uh, from Vultures to Vampire trilogy. Um, uh, uh, it's it was supposed to be one book. <laughs> I knew it would never be one book. Uh, uh, I hope to make it into two books, um, uh, but unfortunately, due to the uh, story, you know, trying to cover the story properly, uh, volume two was uh, twice the size of volume one. So David took the David Pleasance took the difficult decision of splitting into three books, mainly because uh, the printer costs for um, volume two were prohibitive due to COVID rises in COVID, and shipping costs were even worse. So so breaking it down to two to two volumes to make a trilogy um, means we can control he can control the costs a lot better. Um, uh, following talks with uh, Michael Batalana. Uh, I'm going to try and change the strap line underneath for volume two and three to reflect what those volumes cover. So I'm sure Michael will be happy with that. Um, so uh, a volume two 
volume two and three are both finished. The text of volume two and three are both finished. Uh, I expect volume two to be released uh, early next year. There may be a digital version first, and volume three will be shortly afterwards because it, you know, all the text is finished. Just needs the layout for volume three. So if you want to know, if you missed some of the post Commodore Amiga story and Commodore story, this really attempts to give a, a fair, unbiased overview of all the developments. Uh, and what really impresses me, uh, having researched and written uh, the vast majority of the book, is the, the sheer breadth uh, uh, of the Amiga community and just how, how smart level we, people we've got in this community. A lot smarter than me, I'll say that for sure. Now, uh, quite a short presentation today, uh, but we really want to get across, obviously, the, the A1222+. Plus. That's our focus on the hardware side. From the software side, you know, we've already touched on some of the work we're, we're involved in. Uh, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, uh, which we, we are trying to um, continue our, our drive towards uh, the, you know, the ultimate Amiga OS 4 operating system going forward. Um, it's, it's our drive to help to do that with our uh, content creation partners and with our stakeholders. So uh, without any more presentation from me, how about some questions from the audience? Um, to make this work, uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. Nobody has a question. Oh my God. Question. I will repeat it. Okay. My question is, at what point can we expect pricing guidance on the Tabor board and a firm ship date? So, LD just want to say, great job on the Tabor. I can't wait to buy one. <laughs> so, uh, LD's question is, um, when can we get pricing guidance and a firm ship date? What, what is your expected date when you can let people know what it's going to cost and uh, when to buy them? Okay, um, ship date, uh, actually, I think Enrico said January, but he's an optimistic Italian, no offense. Uh, it, it, will, it, would, it will depend on probably me, us, paying uh, up front for the whole production run and, uh, and availability of components. When I say first quarter, I'm LD, uh, I'm pretty confident the first quarter will, will be, the, you know, February, March will be the shipping date. Uh, cost, I'm still trying to keep it down to the levels that we talked about. Uh, Matthew's probably wriggling in his seat now because the, the <laughs> prices we, we've got um, and we're still you know, trying to uh, negotiate those are ridiculously high. Um, but I've committed to funding it, so I will do my best to keep the price within reason. Does that answer your question, Eldie? The actual pricing guidance. I, I know they don't know what it is now. Yeah, yeah. So the but question when the production is, run is done, presumably by that point they'll know. Do, do you have a date for a date? Yeah. Do, do you have a date for a date for when you want to? Oh, no, well, I'm, ex I'm expecting the final pricing uh, from the manufacturers any time now. Um, Enrico is working on that, and he's sick of me every week sending a note saying, "I need the price, Enrico. I need the price, Enrico." So, so I'm as anxious as you to find the final price because now I have to fund it. Okay, so no. Yes, George. I have a question. Uh, for the introduction run for the tabor, I guess the first people that are going to receive ones are going to be the guys that did the pre-order. Uh, how many uh, will they expect to have uh, available for the rest of the people that would like to buy them? I'm assuming you guys can't hear anything, correct? No, but not, I can hear George speaking, but not really clearly. Okay, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's the, the microphone laptop. He's basically saying, um, you guys took pre-orders for Tabors. Do you have an understanding of what the initial run is going to be for people beyond the pre-order? Yeah. Um, Matthew and I have been discussing this. I, I'm committing to 200 in the first run. So there should be plenty available for, for people who, who, who are not involved in the pre-order. 200? Okay. So 200, you say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions in the room?
Yeah, for somebody that's a little uh, backtracked on their X5000, that's in the older enhancer software version one point whatever, is there a package deal where we can get V54, uh, the Nova Bridge, and the updated uh, video drivers all in one, or do we have to buy the three of them together at the full price? So uh, TJ's question is, uh, for enhancer one owners, um, Matthew, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the logical uh, next path would be to go to Enhancer 2, because that's that's the line that we're, we're developing for at the moment. Uh, 54 is a future project, so I would um, uh, I would encourage customers to, to go from version 1 to version 2, um, and then let's see what happens with 54. Um, six to nine months, we, we've still got a development time on 54, and um, we've still got to beta test it then and uh, and get it through the door. So, um, yeah. Matthew, uh, is, is, uh, is, there, is there an upgrade price from version one to version two? No, no, there hasn't. There's been such such big changes between V4 V1 and V2. It's been very, very expensive development, V2. Um, uh, it's, uh, we, we couldn't justify an upgrade price. We did initially, uh, for customers, customers who bought the, the graphics upgrade from version one, they got V2 for free. So if you went that path, and this was a couple of years ago, and you bought the graphics upgrade, you, you qualified for V2 for free, and a lot, most of the customers did this, but uh, that's that path is closed now. So you know you have to go, you have to go full price on V2 now, and um, we're still we're still not getting all our revenue back for the for the development that's gone into V2. Uh, so we can't really justify any more discounts. Um, we've already discounted like through the graphics upgrade path a couple of years ago. We've already discounted quite a bit. So what do you say, Matthew, to answer TJ, it's you upgraded version V2 and then if you want the Nova Bridge, that's an additional. Yeah, uh, with with respect to Nova Bridge, you can wait till it comes out with V54 or if you want early access, you can buy it for full price now uh, and have the pleasure of early access. But um, uh, it depends. It's, it's purely up to you. You know who, which way you want to go. But we're being upfront. We're saying, look, we're, it's going to be in a future project a product. Um, oh, and know. if you want to gain early access, a bit like a VIP, you know, and ju yeah, jump I mean, the queue, like you can get Just jump the line, I should say, in America, and you can gain access to Nova Bridge already um, by by paying for it. But it, that's a that's basically you take your money and pays you, pays if you if you want to. It, it's purely your choice if you want to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, we uh, we reached out to Amiga News DE and we got a couple questions from them. Um, I'm gonna modify this a little bit. There's been reports of issues with the Cyrus Plus board uh, needing repair and whatnot. Um, there hasn't. Been Response to those questions publicly. Uh, do, you, do you care to comment on the support levels for people who had Cyrus boards that have had problems with them, um, and you know success rate on repairs or how you're going to help that with those folks? Uh, so, Cyrus has been very, very um, good quality product. Uh, we've had very few boards come back, and that the majority of the boards that we've had come back is when. People have snapped off their SATA connectors, or um, they've broken the uh, the clasp on the lithium ba uh, battery holder. That and um, and at one point we had oh, we had a couple of customers who knocked off capacitors off the board and ripped ripped some of the tracks. But we haven't had any failure rates because of uh, defective components. Um, the board has been very robust, and uh, it's been pleasing how robust it has been. Um, 
and the vast majority of the boards out there, we we haven't had any reports of them being uh, faulty or um, have developing problems. Um, so if there are some issues that we're unaware of, then please send us send us an email. Matthew, and we we can we can look into that. Matthew, how would you compare it to the uh, X one thousand in terms of performance and reliability? Um, I think it's far more reliable than the X one thousand, but I think. When viruses designed the X1000, it was they were trailblazing, and they learnt a lot of lessons with the X1000. The X1000 is very, very reliable, incidentally. But mm. uh, I, I think you know they they went overboard with the X5000 with belts and braces approach, and uh, you can really see you know that at the, at the end of the day, that their business was the military sector, and they wanted to produce a board that. Uh, could could last for a long period of time, and uh, it, as we all know, Amigans love to keep their boards for decades. You know, so it was a perfect fit with with Barisys and their design yeah. ethics. I, I can I can attest to the fact that uh, <laughs> I knocked a component off one off my fifty forty four, and I was changing out I was changing out multiple graphics cards when I was doing some testing yeah. of the new. I must have changed out. I don't know, 30 or 40 graphics cards, and uh, and I managed to knock a component off just because <laughs> uh, frustration and whatever. But never mind, it, it got fixed very easily. It happens, uh, it happens. Yeah, happens. yeah, but, yeah, but well, that was yeah. what. Now, one thing that it, the question hasn't been asked, but I'll, I'll, I'll answer it because uh, it's someone at uh, Mega 37 asked me when would the, um, the X5040 boards be available based on the P5040? Quad core CPU running at 2.2 gigahertz. Well, do you want to say something about that, Matthew? Yeah, we've got to the end of the P5020 P20, boards now. Uh, we've almost exhausted our stock. I want to keep a couple of boards back, but um, now we, for the last couple of months, we've been shipping out uh, to our distributors the P5040 itself. Uh, and that's out in the wild. You might have seen on some of the forums people very happy to receive P5040s and uh, there are a lot of new happy owners of the of those out there. So um, yeah, it's out and it's shipping and people are, are, are very content with their purchases so and far. And is, is the price any higher than the P5020 version? Yeah, it, it is higher but we leave that down to resellers to to uh specify what what price they want to charge because they're going through at the moment computer components uh, graphics cards power supplies towers uh are all much higher uh, post covid and uh, these guys have to make a bit of money for assembling a complete computer and, and also offering the warranty because the warranty comes from the the reseller so they're the first port of call um so we we let them decide the price that they want to charge the end user and and they're supplied with an os4 license um these guys are shipping them out with os4 licenses as, and uh sometimes they will do dual boot with more fast and uh, e even linux configurations as well so so there's plenty of choice out there in the wider market i must admit that omega 37 i was really pleased to see uh, on on the uh, AAA technology stand, AAA technology was a combination of Aon, Amiga Kit, and Armedia computers. Uh, they had both a X5000 running OS 4.1 and a Morph OS. And on the Morph OS stand, they had a massive monitor running uh, uh, Morph OS on the X5000. So it was really nice to see that clap. Cl Cooperation, collaboration between the two next generation operating systems. I really, I really like that. And at one point on, on our stand, um, the Morphos machine went down, and uh, Frank uh, from, from the Morphos team was enlisted along with uh, some of his colleagues to tr try and get the hard drive up and running. I'm pleased to say that they did, and we had our X5000 running Morphos again, uh, mm -hmm. thanks to them. Okay. Great. So uh, we, we take uh, how many more questions do we have here? I saw George. Anyone else? Any other questions on the show floor? Okay, so four more questions, and then uh, we'll, 
we'll wrap our segment here. George, which question? Uh, Trevor said about the collaboration with the Morphos team. Is this going to be extended with other stuff, like uh, supporting Morphos with uh, radio drivers or something? So the, uh, the question is, you mentioned uh, uh, collaborating with the Morphos team on the hardware side. Are you going to collaborate on uh, radio driver or other software uh, programs? Well, well, uh, the uh, the Morphos guys have been to date and have helped us with quite a few projects uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but we were stuck with Ethernet drivers, U-boot, all sorts of things like that. Uh, we're, we're very grateful for their support that they've given uh, to date, and we do have a working relationship with them. Um, the Radiant drivers, uh, I understand that Mark Olson is is working full guns ahead with his new Radiant drivers. So I don't think they they need our software at the moment because they they're um, in in the middle of a huge development with their own Radiant drivers. And of course, they use uh, Cyber Graphics uh, uh, API, and our API with our with our new, latest Radian drivers is is different uh, internally, so um, I I think that um, I think I think the the two the two groups of developers will will have a very strong relationship going forward, and um, I, we look forward to to seeing their new Radian drivers because that that will be great when customers want to dual boot their systems and don't want to have two graphics cards in in uh, in one system. They can just use one Radian card and, and boot directly from that into either Morphos or, or our own software. Well, and the version might be much better than what we have, and they keep maintaining that. What about the, the smart file system? Is there an opportunity for collaboration there? Um, well, Smart File System is developed by Jörg Strohmeyer, and uh, we've got an agreement with Jörg um, to distribute it with the enhancer only. Uh, and uh, so I suppose if there's going to be a Morphos version of that, uh, the Morphos team would have to talk to Jörg um, to, to get some sort of agreement uh, for, for that. Um, uh, and that's that's probably the best route to do that. But uh, but uh, um, smart file system one I, I know exists on 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 Morphos as well, doesn't it? Discord. Uh, okay. Um, so two questions from the uh, from Amiga News DE, and then a couple questions from the YouTube channel. Um, also the easier one. Any updates on? Oh yeah, okay, thank you for that. Um, I should have mentioned that. Uh, uh, the developer, which is uh, Hans Jörg Frieden, uh, is now has produced a little video for me of LibreOffice, uh, an aspect for LibreOffice uh, running. I should have posted that by now. I was gonna post it in my next uh, blog. Uh, the idea now is to every couple of months post a video update of the progress he's making. It's, there's been a major overhaul of it to bring it up to uh, up to speed. Uh, it's been a long, drawn-out project. It's been a very expensive project, but you know we'll finally get to a situation where you know I think we can start getting beta testers back out again. Um, you mentioned having a reserve of CPUs. That'd be, yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be so easy, wouldn't it? Just dropping a new CPU. <laughs> <laughs> oh, life would be so easy. <laughs> I think that answers the question. <laughs> uh, but yes, I suppose we could sell the CPUs um, to bring some money in uh, and cover some of our costs. But at the moment, we, we do have about nine hundred and fifty CPUs uh, for the uh, A twelve twenty two plus. Um, and we'll, we'll use you know a couple hundred of those, and then we'll see how it goes. And the, you know, if, if that's a, 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 a successful system, then we'll certainly use up the CPUs. I think. Um, one of the questions from the YouTube stream, and this is for Matthew. Any uh, any thoughts about doing another production run of the Prig uh, Prism 
Mega Mix. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really good question. And we are thinking about doing that. We have to get some funding for it first. Um, but uh, we're looking at expanding the uh, software drivers and expanding. We, uh, we've already got a developer who's, who's done a lot of work on the software drivers, getting them to a, a new level with new functionality. So that, that will benefit an existing Prisma users. Uh, and if we can get some funding for the hardware, we can get a kickstart the new hardware into, into production. But that will be that will be in the, the in the new year, so the first quarter of the new year. So uh, yeah. watch the, watch this space. Yeah, Matthew's been talking to me about that. I mean, he's been a bit, as typically he's been conservative, Matthew. We are going to produce a new run of Prisma Mega Mix cards. Uh, he's right about the funding and. Uh, uh, He's in negotiation with me about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Any other questions for here? Okay. Well, you know, uh, just to point out the fact that it's uh, 11 o'clock on the west coast of the United States. It's <laughs> 7 a.m. for you, Trevor, or 6 a.m.? Yeah, 6.55. Uh, 7 p.m. here. Yeah. So truly a global effort because this call is literally spanning the entire planet. Okay, that's it. Guys, uh, one of them go to bed. I guess both go back to bed. And then <laughs> never wake up later. We wish you guys could have made it. Thank you so much for your time dialing in. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, we miss we we miss you all. So um, yeah. hopefully next year we'll we'll be there in person. And, and have a great show with lots of AAA fun. Okay, bye guys.